In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about setting up Adobe Captivate so that you're ready to rapidly develop your e-learning courses. So, some of this is covered in um, another e-learning video that I did about setting up your preferences, but uh, hopefully this isn't too redundant. There's a few things here that I mentioned uh, that will be in that video as well. Um, so really everything you need to do is from the edit drop down but uh, from the edit drop down menu now you notice I don't have any projects open because I'm setting up universal settings so just keep it uh, clean and simple don't have a, a project open just go into your edit drop down menu and uh, when when captivate decides to wake up there it is we're going to select preferences or shift F8 alternatively if you prefer uh, shortcut keys. So this brings up my preferences uh, dialog window. If um, if the recent new uh, you know open project window is covering it, just click on there and that'll bring it to the front, bring it to the focus. And we'll just talk a little bit about some of the options that are here. By default, these two options are unchecked. I really strongly recommend that you generate a project backup. Now, project backups themselves don't actually contribute to rapid e-learning development. But what they do contribute to is avoiding a whole bunch of rework. Uh, at times, Captivate, of course, it, it draws on system resources like no other program that I can think of. I think it's even a bigger draw on your resources than something like Photoshop. And from time to time, that's going to corrupt your project file. You're going to crash Captivate if you're running, you know, sort of the bare minimum system requirements. So ensuring that you always have an extra saved copy of your last saved work is crucial to being able to uh, pick up where you left off in case something happens to your main project file. So I strongly recommend that you check that off. The other thing is, is that um, Adobe Captivate 8 in particular has the ability to remember uh, your custom workspaces, so how you like Adobe Captivate set up. Um, do you like panels undocked? Do you like certain panels in view and certain panels turned off? This is where you can set that up. Checking this off with no other project open will ensure that this option is selected in a universal way for all future projects. The default locations, you can change that if you wish. You can clear the cache from time to time to save you some hard disk space. But that's pretty much all I wanted to show you about the general settings. Let's move now to the defaults category. So the main area that I want to focus on is this right here. And this is the object defaults. Um, object defaults are every time you apply an object to your project file, there's certain characteristics or parameters that are set. For example, let's take a look at, um, at uh, text caption. Let me restore the default here. Text captions, when you paste them into your project or create them in your project, their default setting is to appear for three seconds on your timeline. For me, and I, this took some time to figure out, but over time I realized that 99 times out of 100, I will always have text captions appear for the rest of the slide. So you can change this default, which I'll do right now. And if you take a look, there's a whole bunch of options. Obviously, you don't need to worry about the objects that you don't use. For example, I generally don't use rollover slidelets. I've never found a need for them. I guess for some people they're extremely important, but for me I've never used them. So I'm not going to worry about that. I am going to worry about things like a highlight box. 
Now for me, highlight boxes are something that I do use, not as frequently as text captions, but they are something that, that I've used from time to time to draw attention to a particular area. In this case here, um, highlight boxes aren't really the same thing for me. So for me, I'm usually highlighting an item for a few seconds. Um, in this case here, if I restore the uh, selected item, the default is specific time of three seconds. Um, I don't need them for the rest of the slide, but I find three seconds is too short for me. So I'm going to change that to five seconds, which is far more likely. Again, I encourage you to go through all of these items and consider what the most common um, defaults that you're going to choose. So I'm going to click OK here. That's really all I wanted to show you within the uh, Preferences window. Let's go back to the Edit drop-down menu and then choose the Object Style Manager. Now, this is something I would do with, let's say, my default template open. So if I have a template file, which is the source of all the different e-learning courses that I produce for a single organization, I would uh, apply this to, uh, to that template. But if I do this with no um, Captivate files open at all, these are going to become universal settings. So let's go into the Object Style Manager. So this is broken down. It looks really confusing. Let me explain what everything is here for you. Um, first of all, here's a list of all the objects that you can uh, set styles for. And let's just open this all up so we can see everything that's in there. And we'll just get everything visible. So as you can see, there's quite a bit of stuff that you can manipulate. We'll start at the top and again start with text captions. Now there are a series of caption styles built into Adobe Captivate and also built into any templates or Captivate files that you create because uh, the, the Captivate courses themselves will inherit and take on these different uh, styles as well. You can clone one of these styles. So I'm going to clone the default caption style here and it's going to create a new caption style. I can edit the name right here. So we'll just call this Paul's caption style. And I'll just take that one off the end here. And I'm going to set this to be the default for all future captions. So I can choose um, what type of caption this is. So of course there's a whole assortment of different caption backgrounds that you can choose. So if let's say you want it all the default captions to always be this ivory style which is kind of nice. It gives it kind of a classic Mac look to it. <clears throat> we can choose our font. So let's say uh, I'm going to choose Myriad, regular, and I like it a little bit smaller than this, so let's make it 18. Um, I don't want formatting. Uh, color is fine. Uh, perhaps we would center all of this stuff. Uh, again, it, it's different for everybody. The way I design e-learning isn't the way that you design e-learning. The whole point of this exercise is to make all of these decisions one time and set them up so that you don't have to spend that much time preparing, for example, all your text captions that come into a course. You could choose line spacing, let's say 1.5, um, margins of five points each, let's say. And do you want there to be a transition? So the default is quite often no transition, but maybe you want a very smooth style so you could uh, fade in on all of your text captions. 
once you've uh, saved this again it's set as my default so moving forward all of my captions will look like this and you can do the same sorts of changes to all of your buttons for example here here's a default button there's different buttons you can change which one is your default button um, by selecting as default you could clone this and come up with your own styles text entry boxes rollover areas highlight boxes all kinds of things you can totally customize the way captivate looks when you're designing and the again the benefit this seems like a whole lot of work you're probably thinking wow why would I want to do this how does this contribute to the rapid development of e-learning it totally does because if you sat down and spent an hour an hour and a half setting everything up setting all of this stuff up based on let's say your corporate style guide which would be provided to you uh, usually by your communications or uh, um, you know the publication department of your organization I guarantee you that there's a specific font that your company wants you to use there's a font spacing font style colors and so forth if you set all this stuff up save this as a template or save it as your default in Adobe Captivate anytime someone needs you to develop a new course you can just boom 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 put paste all that content into your slides and rapidly build that course rather than spending hours and hours and hours setting the text formatting setting the colors the fill the different transition effects the time that appears on your screen all of this stuff will be affected by the decisions that you make here and later on you'll thank me because I've saved you hundreds if not thousands of hours guys if you like the videos that I'm producing for you please subscribe to my channel and if you like this video in particular uh, I encourage you to give me a thumbs up